Hello and welcome to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. In this series, we're going to look at how to host our own email server on a Raspberry Pi with the traffic passing through our home router. In addition to this, we're also going to go to great lengths to ensure that our emails will arrive at our recipient's address in their inbox and not in their spam box. We mustn't underestimate the importance of this last step. In fact, it makes up about a third of the effort that you will have to go to to set up an email server properly. First off though, let's have a look at what you already need to know. It's very important to note that this video forms part of a larger video series, the first part of which is all about hosting a website, WordPress specific in this case, on a Raspberry Pi through your home router for free. It's important I mention this now because I have to make the assumption that you have already been through this course to avoid repeating material, and I'll explain why shortly. If you haven't viewed this course yet, I do suggest that you do so. The website portion of the video series can be viewed on my channel under the hosting playlist. There are about three hours of videos which will explain how to set up your Raspberry Pi such that it's ready to act as a hosting machine, both for a website but also for an email server. This includes how to secure your Pi for external access. It includes how to poke holes in your router's NAT firewall, which you'll need to do extensively for an email server. It shows how to streamline your access and connections through the use of an SSH alias. It shows how to edit files on the Raspberry Pi using the Visual Studio Code editor via an SSH tunnel, and this ties into the alias as well. It also talks about how to work with Cloudflare and how to use it to set up the necessary DNS settings for a website. And we will be making good use of Cloudflare for the email server as well. And it covers many more things that are specific to hosting a website on a Raspberry Pi efficiently and securely. So all of these things, as you can see, do have a significant overlap between hosting a website at home on a Raspberry Pi and hosting an email server at home on a Raspberry Pi. So please do have a look through that course on hosting a website before you do this course uh, in order to make sure that you've got all the information you need. So in this video series then, just to reiterate, we're going to be looking at setting up our own email server. And I'm going to make the assumption you already have the list on this slide understood and set up on a Raspberry Pi. So let's move on and explain what we're going to cover specifically in this video series. So what makes an email server? Well, the actual email server itself is a good place to start, and that's an SMTP server. And the one we're going to use is called Postfix. So that's something we're going to be setting up. You do require a testing suite, and there are a couple of utilities we can use to perform the tests we need to make sure our emails are going out and coming back as we expect. And these are OpenSSH and Telnet. We will need to define a mail storage format, and we'll be using MailDeer. The mail directory format is the most common. Um, it's basically how we set up our directory structure to store the emails that we send and receive. We're going to need protection from unauthenticated use of our own email server, and we'll be using SASL for that. We'll be setting up an IMAP server as well, and that's required for external access to the mailboxes. Basically, clients like Thunderbird or Outlook will need access to our mail server in order to receive emails to our client so that we can then have a nice user interface to send and receive emails. We'll be implementing some essential spam protective measures during the setup on the Raspberry Pi. But more importantly, we'll be setting up the correct DNS configuration to avoid legit emails going from your, uh, from your email server to spam boxes. This is very hard to avoid, actually. You really do have to tick an awful lot of boxes for the top end email clients to receive your emails and accept them as OK. The majority of them are very picky, particularly Gmail and Outlook. Um, you really do have to jump through hoops, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So that's it. That's what's going to be covered in this video series. As mentioned, please do have a look at the WordPress hosting video series as it covers everything you need to know to get started, and it will mean that you've got a Raspberry Pi that's very well configured for doing what we're going to be doing here. If you are 
finding this sort of material useful I'd appreciate if you could like this video and very much appreciate if you could subscribe to my course because it's the only way I get any feedback on whether or not people are finding it useful. So thank you very much and I will see you in the first technical video on how to set up your own email server.